we need someone else. Okay. So we'll get started. Lori will find her way in with the support of Mandy. Um, but I just want to begin by welcoming everybody to our wonderful Celebration of Families Awards evening. Um, normally we would be in person, usually at Manning Park, used to be in Naramata, um, and we would usually be together, celebrating together, and due to COVID, we are now online. Um, but that's, that's fine too. It's going to be wonderful to be able to celebrate with one another tonight um, and just have some fun and share some really great stories and share some time together. Um, I want to start by acknowledging that from coast to coast to coast, we want to acknowledge and honor the um, ancestral, traditional, and unceded territories of all of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people that call this land home and to which this land belongs. And I'd like to invite you all to reflect and acknowledge the effect of residential schools and colonialism on Indigenous families and communities and to consider how we are and we can each in our own way, try to move forward in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. And so I personally wanna recognize that I am calling in from the traditional and unceded territories of the Katsi and Kwantlen First Nations to which that I live and I work. And I am so grateful to do that here in my home. So I want to start by saying with that, that we want tonight to be really fun. And so it can sometimes be difficult for things to be really fun and engaging when you're online and Zoom. And many of you probably have been on Zoom all day already. But um, I was just mentioning to um, Jennifer Charlesworth that we had the, the we were so grateful to be with Amanda Fenton um, earlier today, who is a masterful facilitator. And and she said to us that sometimes to lift an event up online um, that might seem like it, it might be long or it might be um, just to kind of make it a little bit more fun, she taught us how to use emojis on, on Zoom. And so you'll see in the bottom right hand corner of your Zoom, there's a word that says reactions and it has a little happy face. And if you click on that, You'll see that actually, if, if there's, there's like the, the clapping hands, there's the thumbs up, there's the heart, and there's like a, a crying emoji, but there's three dots at the end of that line. If you click the three dots, it opens up a whole spreadsheet sort of, of different emojis. And so what I'd like to invite you to do is throughout tonight, if you are just feeling like, an emotion or of some sort, or you just feel like I want to, I just want to share an emoji right now. Just feel free to use those throughout the entire evening and have fun with them and play with them. The other thing I want to invite you to do is use the chat. Um, normally in meetings that we're in, we kind of try to avoid the chat because it can be like sometimes two meetings are going on at the same time. But tonight we want to celebrate. And we want to encourage you to, if you want to share a story in the chat, if you want to share a reflection of something you're hearing during tonight, please use the chat. Um, if you want to, we have a lot of award winners that we're going to be talking about later. If you have a story you want to share about one of the award winners, please do that in the chat too. Some of the people on here tonight might not know the award winners. And so if you have something you want to share about them, please do that too. Um, and also as we hear our, our keynote tonight from Jennifer, of course, if you have some reflections um, about that as well, please share them with, with one another in the chat as well. And also we're always um, at FSI, we love good humor. And so if you have a good funny story to tell or a tale of FSI, um, of course, we know some of those tales are supposed to be kept in the, in the circle of FSI. I can see Jane grimacing going, oh no, where's this gonna go? But um, of course, share some some funny stories tonight we're here to celebrate 
Um, and so I just want to say that I know that the last year or two have been sometimes particularly difficult, but that's not why we're here tonight. Tonight we're here to celebrate. Tonight we are here um, to just be together in relationship and connection. We have so many things that we can raise up and lift up with being with one another. That's what FSI is about. That's what our partners are about. That's what our communities are about. And that's why we're here. And so I just want to us to all just for this while that we're together, let's put aside all of those things that can sometimes bring our hearts down and let's just lift one another up and let's just find a time that we can celebrate and just share love and compassion and kindness and joy with one another tonight because that's why we're here. So I want to um, just thank you all again for coming. I'm going to tell you the order of our events tonight in case you're wondering. And then I'm going to pass it over to the president of our board. So first, um, we are going to hear, I've mentioned her name a few times, hear from Jennifer Charlesworth, who I am just so grateful is here with us tonight. Um, and Dominic is going to introduce her in just a few moments. Then we're going to have our awards. Um, and uh, many of you have been at our awards ceremony before. We have our awards to celebrate people who have gifted other people in community by celebrating diversity and inclusion and just done tremendous things and have been nominated by people in their communities or throughout the province for raising up um, the experience of other people around inclusion. Um, so we're going to we're going to do those award ceremonies. And so I will have a few words to say. Somebody else will have a few words to say. And then we'll invite the people who have received the awards. If they want to say something, they're more than welcome to speak as well. And then we're going to do our volunteer certificates. And sometimes I think I say this every year and, and I, I will continue to say it. Um, we give certificates out to our volunteers for for. Um, milestone periods of time that they have been with us and our volunteers will um, have received their their certificates in the mail but I feel like we many people um, we should be an organization that is kind of the got get an award for longevity of volunteering because volunteers come to us and they really don't leave and I think that speaks to the nature of our family at FSI. And so then at the end of the, the certificates, um, we will be closing our first time ever online 50-50 um, and our silent auction. And I want to just at this point in time, thank all of you for supporting those events for us because with our fundraising, which we don't do an awful lot of, but this one has been extremely successful. And, um, and so we're gonna do that online and we're gonna announce the winner. Um, and so with that, I do want to just remind you that the 50 50 is closing at 630 that's in about 18 minutes. And the silent auction closes at seven. And so like I was saying earlier before we got started when we're in person people often um, I'm looking at you, David Painter and Lori Painter, guard your items in the silent auction in person, <laughs> sending decoys sending me off and other people off so you can um, do some do some dirty bidding. But in any case, the uh, silent auction is closing at seven online. So watch your bids. Um, but other than that, that is the um, and then after that, what I was going to say is we will then um, open it up for some storytelling, which is kind of um, a, a rite of passage for FSI. We love our storytelling. And so if you do have any stories that are in your mind, you want to share some particularly mon monumental times that have stayed in your mind or some really funny times that will stay in your mind, I'm sure our lantern story will come out again, which is always a funny one, um, or just some times that have just remained in your heart and you want to share them with people, please do as well, because we do have some new resource parents um, and some new families on our call. And so sometimes sharing those, it's just a time of celebration. So without further ado, I am now going to hand things over to the president of the FSI board, Dominic Rockall, and I'm going to mute myself. So welcome, Dominic. Thanks, Angela. Um, so good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, FSI's annual Celebration of Families event. 
Uh, as Angela said, my name is Dominic Rockall, and I am just now the new president of the board of FSI. Uh, if you're wondering, like, when did that happen? Uh, it just happened. So um, uh, I just want to acknowledge I'm calling in from the la unceded territory of the uh, Snunemu uh, First Nation. So I want to thank everybody for coming, taking the time to join us in honoring the amazing families, volunteers, and community partners who are all part of this journey we're on to build communities that are inclusive and diverse and celebrate the gifts that everyone, everyone brings into this world. Um, everybody, everybody that's here tonight contributes to that vision in their lives uh, with their families and the work they do. So in addition to saying thanks for coming, I wanna thank all of you for everything that you do. Um, tonight, we're very fortunate to have with us uh, Dr. Jennifer Charlesworth. Uh, Dr. Charlesworth is, a British, is, is British Columbia's representative for children and youth. Uh, she was appointed as acting representative, um, effective August 31st, 2018, and confirmed her appointment as BC's representative for children and youth on October 1st, 2018. Uh, Dr. Charlesworth has worked in the uh, BC social and healthcare sector since 1977. Um, FSI is, is very connected to Dr. Charlesworth. Um, we support the work that she does, and she definitely supports the work that we do. Uh, so we're very grateful to have her here tonight to celebrate with us. Um, there's, a, there's a lot more I could say about uh, her long history and education and everything that she's accomplished in the sector, but instead I'm just going to hand over the Zoom speaker to uh, Dr. Charlesworth. Thank you, Dominic. It's lovely to see you and lovely to see some uh, familiar names and, uh, and whatnot. And so it, I feel like I'm in a, in a beautiful circle of people and it's a lovely thing to be doing at the end of a day. Um, <clears throat> I am so delighted to be with you tonight and uh, to celebrate families and the huge difference you're making in the lives of so many children, youth and young adults and their families. I wanna start off in a good way too. And thank you, Angela, for starting us off to help us remember whose lands we're on. I am, uh, I would like to acknowledge the keepers of the lands that I'm on, which is the Lekwungen people, notably Esquimalt Lusongi's First Nation. And just out my window, I'm in my office in downtown Victoria, and just out my window, there's a beautiful promontory in the inner harbor. And it's actually a very sacred place where when families, when they when, newborn children had kind of come up to um, a point in time where they, it was clear that they were going to make their home, uh, they were going to live and, and carry on in this, on this plane, they would be given their first name at this spot. And uh, there was a period of time for, I think it was about 108 um, years or something like that, that no ceremony was taking place. And our knowledge keeper was the one who brought the ceremony back to name his grandchild. So when I look out my window, I look to that sacred place and I'm so grateful to be reminded of the, the work that has been done on behalf of families and children here. So I'm so glad that you are gonna be doing stories today because that's what I'd like to do a little bit uh, with you. I, um, I wanna share some things that I, we've been thinking of and been working on and some of the stories that I think will lift us up. <laughs> so um, I've known Angela for a long time um, and been involved with the Family Support Institute, but many times it's very serious business when we're talking about things, we're trying to figure out how we're going to respond to the things that are emerging and, and the challenges that we're facing. But I've never had the opportunity to be in ceremony in, in this ceremony with you. So I'm, I'm thrilled and celebration is exactly what we need right now. Um, and I will say that I'm not going to be able to stay the whole time because we're actually doing a little celebration for some of our team members who've come to Victoria because we've had uh, quite a, a significant week and I wanted to make sure that I, um, I honored them as well. So I'm doing a little bit of, of dancing between. But let's think about where we're at. We're all pandemic weary. We're looking to create a positive post-pandemic world, but sometimes it feels like there's crisis everywhere we turn, whether it's climate crisis or the conflict in Europe, the toxic drug crisis that's leaving almost no family untouched. But amidst this chaos, there are abundant reasons for hope and optimism. 
there is inspiring work going on. That's one of the sacred, uh, one of the things that I feel so fortunate to be able to do in the sacred job that I have is to see the, the difference that is being made as well as the challenges. Even though it's compelling and sometimes necessary to be drawn into those problem areas, I believe it's equally or even more important to keep our minds and hearts firmly centered on the positive, on what's going right, so that we can see the difference that's being made. And I think we need to do this to keep our heads up, looking for the bright spots right now, sharing and celebrating that great work and the beautiful outcomes and learning what works and amplifying it and seeing the possibilities for the future. Things are changing in a good way and it's important to hold on to that. Family Support Institute is one bright light in the landscape. My hold my hands up to you. Amazing work going on throughout the province. And I see some, some folks that I've chatted with in the past in this circle, the peer support, the family support, the advocacy work that makes such an incredible difference in the lives of those with disabilities and diverse abilities. So uh, as Dominic said, I've been the representative for children and youth in BC since the fall of 2018. And while I, I, I didn't anticipate leading this organization in the midst of a, uh, of a pandemic, um, so it hasn't always been easy. I can say though, that I'm encouraged to see the needle moving for young people in some key areas. So at heart, what we're celebrating tonight is a group of exceptional people who are focused on making a difference and particularly on belonging. And I wanna talk about that tonight and share some stories because when we speak of inclusion, I think that's what we're talking about. We're talking about people who are creating spaces of belonging so that no one feels like they're on the outside. And belonging is a key concept in the work of my office, and I'll tell you why. So about a year ago, in June of 2021, my office released an investigation report called Sky's Legacy, a focus on belonging. And this was a pivotal report. It was the first investigation that I decided to do since starting as, uh, as the representative. But it became pivotal for a number of reasons, and in particular because it changed the trajectory of our work and understanding how we might best help young people. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Sky, uh, a young First Nations girl who died due to the toxic, toxic drug poisoning on her 17th birthday. It's a tragic story and there were many tears shed in my office at the loss of such a vibrant young person who was so full of potential. And uh, while it might seem odd to speak of such tragedy when we're here to celebrate, there's a good reason for it. So Sky left us with a vital lesson around belonging which will help improve the lives of children and youth. And I think she would celebrate that. And we're grateful to her for her lessons. And that's why we call it Sky's Legacy. To give you a sense of who she was um, and think about the skies in your life as, we're do as I'm doing this. Sky was the kind of kid who could light up a room. She was a character, kind, intelligent, witty, and with personality to spare. And as a young child, she was described as cheeky and mischievous the twinkler in her eye. She had a great sense of humor, an infectious laugh and a zest for life. And she was a bubbly kid who had boundless energy. She liked to be busy. In fact, she needed to be busy. And whenever she got the chance, she, she channeled that boundless energy through activities such as rock climbing, swimming, horseback riding. And as it was described to us, fishing, because that was her Zen. She was intelligent, inquisitive, dedicated to her friends. She would always ask questions, stick up for other people and state her opinions. In fact, she said she was a wise person, an owl in her own words, and the kind of person who would stand up for others. And she wanted to work with children in the future and expressed interest in becoming a pediatrician or a counselor. So as I say, think of the skies in your circle, but Sky's life didn't turn out as she planned. She was placed in government care at the age of five and never saw her mom again, despite the fact that her mom tried very, very hard to stay connected. She lived in a series of foster homes, had three failed adoption placements, multiple moves in, uh, across communities, which meant multiple school changes as well. 15 different foster homes and eight different schools. She wasn't provided with opportunities to connect with her extended family or her Dene culture in any meaningful way, and she never got to go home to her territory in Fort McPherson in the Northwest Territories, even though she'd been really clear she wanted to do that and had done all the research and outreach. 
While there were many people who cared about Sky and some who worked very hard to support her, the overall response of our child serving system led to what the wonderful Dr. Martin Broken Leg calls unbelonging. And that's the key. It was during our work with Sky that we had that aha moment and our perspectives shifted. We'd been looking at Sky's history using the language of permanency. We hear that in our system. But our First Nations and Métis partners emphasized that what was really critical for Sky and for all young people was the feeling of belonging. It wasn't so much that Sky's story was about a lack of permanency, but it was about a lack of belonging. And once we realized that, everything changed. The light went on. Dr. Broken Leg talked about the importance of belonging that way back when he first developed his circle of courage, decades ago, actually. So it's not a new idea. But it's so fundamental because every human needs connections and to feel a sense of belonging in all aspects of their lives. It's, I like to say, connection to people, place, community, culture, and a positive sense of identity and self. And if we reflect on our own lives, of course, you can see how belonging mattered, how connection to people mattered, connection to the place that you live. So it's not often you find a universal truth, but for us, this is one. Because when kids feel safe and, and, and like they belong, they do much better. So I have to share this story with you because I just heard it today from one of our advocates. And uh, there's so much in this story. Uh, sadly, I won't be able to share some details because I have to protect the confidentiality of this precious young person, but you'll get the beauty of it. So this is a young person we've come to know both because of our long-term advocacy for them and because of literally dozens and dozens of reports of critical injuries that they have endured. Sometimes four, five, and six a month we were getting, so really serious injuries that this young person was um, experiencing. And uh, the services in place just weren't able to keep them safe. And so many of their needs were left unaddressed for too long and the trauma and the loss in their short life was unspeakable. And many, as you know, sometimes people turn away when they think the situation was hopeless, but others leaned in. And it was people in the ministry and the community that worked together, worked so hard on this young person's behalf recently. So now this young person's in a stable and loving home in a new community, actively connected and in fact, eagerly embracing their cultural roots, their Cree ancestry, and uh, really connected to the teachings. So this is the beautiful thing. Our advocate was invited to attend a naming ceremony. So this young person was given a traditional name that recognizes all facets of them, the things that have been very hard and the things that they are going to be growing into into their adulthood. And this young person apparently greeted all of the guests so graciously and actually created gifts for everyone, made them by hand, and this is a young person who we were literally worried about daily, who we thought might not make it to the next day, who was harming themselves, who was being excluded from the day-to-day -day experiences that all of our children should have, who was physically separated from people, literally physically separated in a locked room and, from, and, and, and not having those caring connections. In other words, they were unbelonged, but now they're thriving. It isn't always great, but it's so much better. So what's the difference? We keep asking these things. When we see things move, what's the difference? For this young person, it wasn't attributable to medications, therapy, or a new staffed group home. It's attributable to this child's fundamental need to belong to people, place, culture, community, and a sense of identity finally being addressed. And that's what's making the difference. I'll share another story of hope. A year ago, we released Excluded, Increasing Understanding, Support and Inclusion for Children with FASD and their families that was centered on children and families with FASD and the lack of understanding and services for them. And uh, we, we love, I love this report um, or this work that we did. We worked directly with children and families with FASD as well as the co-researcher with FASD, Miles Himmelrich. Um, and although we didn't shy away from pointing out the glaring gaps in services and government systems for supporting people with FASD, we took a strength-based approach with the young people themselves and their stories of ability and resilience were inspiring. 
So it's clear that they were not defined by FASD. It was simply a part of them. It didn't prescribe what their lives would look like. And if there was any characteristic that they had in common and that stood out, it was their strength and ability to adapt in a world that had done a poor job of adapting itself to them. This report, if you've read it, found far too many instances of exclusion and not enough instances of inclusion or belonging. <clears throat> but there were also shining moments where we saw spaces of belonging created that really lifted our hearts and spirits. So for example, two siblings with FASD were having trouble fitting into the public school system that they were in and lots of anxiety. There were a number of reasons for this, but primarily it was because the system wasn't adapting itself to these two amazing kids. So the, the caregiver switched to his tribal school and immediately the children were able to relax and thrive. That's the power of belonging. You shouldn't have to change schools to find belonging, but that to, and that was one of the reasons for the report, in fact, to help create systems that adapted to kids and that don't require children to adapt to systems. I'll tell you a lot, another little story at attached to uh, that report. So our project lead, uh, Sarah, shared with me a moving experience she had while working with Miles and a 10-year-old boy who has FASD. And there was a, th this child um, whom I met and who actually presented to the deputy ministers of, of uh, five different ministries, particularly creative kid who can make virtually anything out of paper. And during one of their sessions, I, Miles asked him if he thinks he's smart. And he said, no. But Miles, who was gifted at working with these kids and has a wonderful way of reframing situations, said to the boy, well, what if we were stranded on a desert island and we needed to get off? Who do you think people would go to? Would they go to Sarah, who's an academic and a writer? Or you, who can make a boat out of paper? And the boy thought about it and said, well, me. So Miles explained to him that all people are smart in their own ways and that we all have value. Then he asked him again, do you think you're smart? And this time the boy had a huge smile on his face and answered with an enthusiastic, yes. It was one of the many heartwarming moments of the project and illustrated one of the tremendous challenges of strengths-based approaches and working with people with lived expertise. One final thing of hope is that after we released the report, we presented it to the Select Standing Committee on Children and Youth, which is the all-party committee that I report to. And Miles presented, as well as three parents of children with FASD, and the committee was blown away. Um, there were tears and a lot of em emotion as the committee members realized the depth of the issues that were being presented to them, and most of them had no idea. And here they are in the committee, and they're amazing folks. The presentation brought home to him that change was urgently needed, and they were in a position to do something about it and they committed on the spot to doing further work in the area, and they have kept that pledge. In fact, they called the ministries of health, citizen services, mental health and addictions, and children and family just a couple of weeks ago to tell them, um, called them into a committee meeting at the Legislative Assembly to say, to, to hold them to account for making the changes that were recommended in that report. So there are things to celebrate. Now, this is why we're here today. We're working hard to embed the critical concept of belonging into government programs and services. But what's so inspiring to me is that tonight we're cel celebrating the people who are already doing that. You are people who are leading the way, who are blazing new trails and from whom we can all learn. The award recipients tonight are creating inclusivity, overcoming barriers and obstacles and never losing sight of the goal of creating spaces of belonging for the people you care about. You're lifting up the voices of people with disabilities and diverse abilities, and you are honoring and centering their experience. It can be difficult, I know, when faced with frequent hurdles to stay positive. Goodness knows it's been hard the last couple of years. And yet it's vital, and that's what you're doing. So I applaud you all. I hold my hands up to you. And I want to say that your example will continue to make a difference. Our young people are watching, and in fact, um, a presenter that uh, joined us today when we were speaking with the Select Standing Committee on another issue said, you know, we are, the, the young people are watching us very, very closely and they're learning from us what 
uh, they should be and what they could be, and that we are the ancestors. And so what kind of a legacy are we going to be leaving for the children? So it's important to keep in mind that you never know who you're inspiring along the way. And so your actions are making a difference now, but will also have long-term impacts. So possibly in ways you never even imagined and you may never even know. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for your dedication and congratulations to you all. And uh, I'm so glad to be able to celebrate each of you. Back to you, Angela. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, can you all hear me? Am I on? Yeah, okay. So thank you very much. That was inspirational. Your stories were inspirational. The work you do is speaking of inspirational. That's what it is. And uh, it's, uh, you know, in, in this field, in this sector, it, it can it can be, uh, you know, it can be difficult. There's a, there's a lot of hurdles, there's a lot of challenges and uh, it can get you down. And so it's so important to focus on the successes and the strengths and build on those strengths. And uh, so thank you for that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'll now hand it back to Angela. Thank you. I've got some sort of note right here. I'm just gonna, there we go. Thank you so much. What a wonderful, way to begin our evening together and um you know when i hear all of the things you're talking about and all of the stories that you're sharing with us it resonates so deeply i know with me and with everyone else i can see heads nodding and you know the 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 um the, the idea of not even the idea the the concept the 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 theme of belonging is what every single one of us are striving towards in the work we do, in the words we speak, in the stories we tell, in, in everything. That's the goal is exactly what you were talking about, belonging for every single person in the world, right? It's not, it's not about disability at that point. It's not about labels. It's just about knowing you have a place of belonging with people who love you, who, with people who care about you, with people who get you. And it's just, it, I'm just so truly grateful for you for putting words and stories to the things that we live in our organization and with our families and our loved ones. So thank you so very, very much. Now, I, um, I know that our 50-50 and all of these things are coming to an end, if not on um, at the end, but I'm going to quickly pass it over to Sylvia because she wants to speak for a few minutes and then we're going to move on to our awards. Yeah, I am so excited to say that the 50-50 closed at $4,750. So the winner, can I do the math in my head, is going to win 23 75 does that sound 2375 so good luck good luck uh, we're just waiting for nexus uh, raffle nexus to to close it up and they'll be sending me uh the winner shortly but i just wanted to highlight that there's still lots of great stuff on our, our on our southern auction uh we have business duffel bags still really undervalued valley b valley bc uh, the canucks in abbotsford there is an Elias Pedersen autographed puck. He is doing hat tricks every time he plays and that's at $45. So there's lots of great stuff. I do encourage you to take a look uh, if you have a chance and back to you, Angela. Thank you. And now we're gonna move on. Oh, oh, I've got another, I'm not moving my video onto the spotlight. So I'm getting this message saying somebody spotlighted me and I'm ignoring it. I don't need to be spotlighted. Um, so anyways, um, now we're gonna move on to our awards. So the very first category that I am presenting to you today is in our volunteer resource parent category. And this award goes to Diana Salcedo. And Diana has been a resource parent with FSI since 2019. And during this time, she has supported countless families. But in addition to that, she has also mentored our staff. She is generous with her time. 
She's patient with everyone she encounters, sharing her personal story with grace and vulnerability, which we all know is so difficult to do and passionate advocacy as she fights for increases to the social services that are so lacking in our province that are leaving families on the verge of breakdown many times. Um, Diana has a creative mind and she shares her gift through many mediums, including graphic design, infographic productivity, many of them you can see on our website. She created all of the infographics for our self-injurious behavior project and they are fantastic. She's also created a, a very moving and informational video about her family's journey that is rich with love and caring and compassion, just the very way Diana is in all of her work. And so I also want to invite Karen Speyer to sp say a few words about Diana at this time. Thanks, Angela. Diana, I am just so honored um, to have met you. Um, when I first met you in my role as regional network coordinator, you were one of the first RPs, resource parents that I met. And I was truly inspired by your family's story. Um, your advocacy for your son and both of your boys and the support that you provide to families in the Delta area. Um, the video that you created about your family and, um, you know, your advocacy for trying to get the equipment that you needed for your son was truly inspiring. And I always appreciate that whenever we have a project or a family, um, family involvement is required in many of the projects that you do, that you're kind of always my go-to gal. Um, and if you're available, I know that you are, you're just so valuable in supporting the families that you have in your area. We have many wonderful our, our resource parents throughout our network and it just really is an honor to have met you and to, um, to see you receive this award. So congratulations, Diana. And I look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> If you have anything you want to say, Diana, you're more than welcome to. If you don't, that's totally fine, too. There's no pressure to speak. Well, I'm a little bit speechless at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, um, yes, thank you all for, for your support and for recognizing the work that I do. I, you know, it's it's been a pleasure working with FSI and, you know, supporting the families in my community. It's just great. I have learned so much um, from each and every of them. Um, you know, I've learned that we we are walking the same walks, struggling in the same ways, and uh, that that has helped me recognize that there's still a lot of work to be done, and that we all have to uh, be together and keep working. You know, keep for working and advocating together for our families uh, because there are many many gaps still to be filled. And um, the families that are more, most vulnerable, uh, they do need others to, 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 to work with and, and to help and keep supporting them and, and help them navigate the system. Uh, so yeah, thank you all. And I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to be here and I'm very grateful for this award. Thank you so much, Diana. The next category that I am going to present is in the category of self-advocate. And so this award goes to Lauren Richardson. And Lauren has been advocating tenaciously or tenaciously for better understanding, respect and supports for people living with FASD. She has done media interviews, she's done newspaper stories, she's done newsletter articles, she's contributed to blogs and many other forms of public awareness and education. Um, she even contacted me at one point because there was an opportunity for um, somebody to be collecting information, to be the source of information for FASD. And she couldn't be that website, of course. And so she, she needed to find a source for that. She's extremely resourceful. Um, and so her tenacity and passion for advocacy and self-advocacy is apparent in everything that she does. And her tender heart 
is also felt in her work with everybody that she comes across. And so in this point in time, I'd like to invite Esther to say a few words about Lauren. Uh, in the world of neurodiversity, there's an expression that says nothing about me without me. Lauren, don't you even start. <laughs> I'm going to lose it already. <laughs> when the excluded report came out, FSI, re we really worked hard to step up our game to understand and support families who live with FASD in their midst. And um, as a parent, I wanted to be an active part of that. But to be really honest, I wasn't exactly sure how that was going to go or what I needed to do to support families. And then I met Lauren. And Lauren has brought exactly the right vision and, and understanding for us to know and see what we can do to help best. Lauren is part of all of the resources that we have with FASD, and she is an integral part of that. She provides um, support and guidance for families, for individuals who live with FASD, and for those of us who are trying desperately to figure out what we can do to support them. So without Lauren, we really wouldn't be nearly as effective if at all effective for me anyway, um, with anyway. <laughs> presence there. So it has been an honor to get to meet Lauren and she has single-handedly taught me, my family and my daughter so much already that I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, Lauren. You are one amazing woman. Thank you, Esther, for saying that. Um, that. It's a huge honor to be here. It's such a, um, you know, I couldn't have done it without any of you. And uh, it's, uh, it's amazing that you can take uh, a dream of yours and um, completely make it a reality for people. You know, when I started my advocacy work in 2019 by doing a bus ad, I had no comprehension that it would go to the lengths that it has. You know, and when I started talking to people at FSI, you know, and, and sharing my story and, and opening up and, and completely talking about my story, um, it's amazing how many um, families and how many people I uh, would touch through um, advocacy. You know, I, I, you know, there's certain people in this life that are gifted with, with being able to, to be um, a, a role model um, for people with disabilities. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm one of them, you know, I, uh, I, I've been able to um, share, share my story, share, share, share my lifetime and, and advocate um, for others who do not have a voice. Um, FASD is a complex and very tricky um, uh, diagnosis, and uh, without people who speak on it, neurotypicals, neurotypicals would not understand what we have to go through on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or a 24-hour basis. You know, there's people in this life that make a difference, um, a huge difference. And growing up, I, I watched uh, a lot of people um, Make, make that difference. But one, one in particular person was a gentleman named uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. And uh, one, of, one of his sayings was, uh, not, one of his quotes, he had many amazing quotes, but one of his quotes was, um, our lives begin to end the moment that we become silent about the things that matter most. And it's so true. No? Um, People with FASD, a lot of us don't have that voice to, uh, to, to first off fight off the alcohol. I mean, when you're a fetus, you don't have, you don't have a choice. You don't have, you don't have a voice, you know, you can't, your parents don't hear the, the screams and the cries. Um, I'm just 
beyond beyond humbled today because I made my dreams come true through um, advocacy. I'm not done. I'm not done dreaming, but um, we need to do more for the diverse community at large. Um, I need to do a lot more. I am, you know, I'm blown away by um, stuff that I read and, and blown away by certain situations that happen that, that have happened recently in my life as well. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to uh, the people at FSI for, for um, lifting my name up and, uh, and uh, putting my name forward. I'd like to say thank you to Mrs. King, Mr. Wendell, and um, uh, Ms. Ms. Uh, Fallowfield and Mrs. Beckett. Um, because without you guys, I wouldn't be where I am today. And um, I also would like to thank um, a lady named uh, Mrs. Brooks. This lady I met um, right in downtown Vancouver. Um, I met her at a conference, at one of the FS FASD conferences I attended in 2000, and, I think it was 2018. And, uh, and the reason why I want to honor her is because she uh, was the first lady that um, gave me the platform to even open up and, and publicly speak to my first presentation to uh, a bunch of people in Ontario. Um, and if it wasn't for her, this award would not be happening. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I love this award. It's a beautiful piece, gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Um, it's made uh, by an agent or by a lady named Diana Salicito, I believe it is on the back. It's a gorgeous piece. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to also say thank you to uh, my family and my, my siblings, Miss um, Miss Richardson and uh, my other sibling, Miss Richardson. Um, and my mom, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. McIntosh, and uh, my father, Mr. Richardson. Um, they're all on this call. If, if you can see them, wave. Hi, hi. Um, and I also want to say thank you to my birth family. You know, uh, my birth parents. And, um, because. You know, if they um, if they, they didn't have me and they didn't um, abandon me, I wouldn't be here. I'd also like to th say thank you to um, um, Mr. Wendell's daughter. Mr. Wendell um, is a gentleman that I met uh, through FSI, uh, and I met his daughter. Uh, Miss Wendell and his uh, amazing wife, Mrs. Wendell. And, uh, you know, I, I met these, these, these amazing people and uh, I got to spend time in their home and, 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 and meet their daughter and, and see how amazing their daughter is uh, through the eyes of somebody who lives with FASD. Their, their daughter also has FASD. And um, it's amazing to watch her um, succeed and, and everything that she does and, and interact with her um, because her FASD diagnosis or her FASD um, plays out differently for her. And um, it's such an honor to be able to, to meet people who have FASD um, and, uh, and also, uh, you know, be friends with other people and friends with families that, that, that have children with FASD. Um, Often people with this condition and families often feel very alone with having this condition and 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 um and um and and uh, you know I, I feel like I brought a gift to the Wendell family and also to the King family and also to um the Nichols family. Uh, uh, the Nichols family is is a, a beautiful, a beautiful family. She I, I met Mrs. Nichols. Um, on one of the FASD FSI uh, meetings uh, a while ago, and uh, she has a, a an amazing, amazing um, uh, young daughter, um, and uh, 
her daughter's 15 years old and uh, I got to know her over Zoom and I got to know her actually in person. I met her in person a while ago. And uh, she, the daughter is absolutely like vibrant and vivacious and just, just such an amazing uh, young girl. She's 15 years old, but her mind is of, of a 30 year old, 30 year old, you know, she, she, she's very profound in, in a lot of the things that she says. And she, you know, she, she said, Lauren, you're my hero. And I said, no, no, you're my hero. Like <laughs> the way you think, um, Mrs. Nichol, Ms. Nichols is, um, absolutely amazing so uh you know it's such an honor to be here uh, you know this ward has humbled me um all my work uh, is you know it's continuing to to bring awareness um you have to remember fetuses don't have voices and uh and uh, we need we need to do better in the world and i will continue to advocate for those who don't have a voice and for those fetuses that are not born yet and uh you know, we, we, need, we need to do better as Canadian citizens. We need to do better as a nation um, because the, 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 the um, needs have not been met and uh, we, have to do, we have to do better. We need to do better because it's the future of our um, Canadian generation that, uh, and the nation and, and, and uh, worldwide. So um, uh, until uh, FASD is completely erased from this world, you know, we need to step up and, and, and talk about it and make, uh, make it be known. Um, anyways, uh, enough about me talking. And <laughs> but uh, take care, so, guys. Thank, thank you, you so much, Lauren. And, you know, when I hear you talking about, um, you know, bringing a gift into um, different people's families. One of the things that I just want to point out is that you have brought such a gift into our entire FSI family. You've brought the gift of you and you've brought the gift of learning and you've brought the gift of knowledge. And, um, and this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of amazing things um, together. And so I just, I just want to thank you so much for that. Um, I am going to move on to our next um, award and um, next is to an organization that has done tremendous work supporting Indigenous individuals who live with disabilities all across Canada. So I'd like to, you to all to please join me in supporting the BC Network on Disabilities Society, sorry, Aboriginal Network on Disabilities Society. And so this is to be cans. They have celebrated 30 years last year in delivering Indigenous disability and health programs and services across Canada. BCANS has always done such an, a tremendous job of bringing forward the issues of disability and Indigenous prevalence and how these intersections further marginalize people in ways that racialize, stigmatize, and discriminate. I've been very grateful to all of the BCAN staff and, and their executive director, Neil Boulanger, that they teach with such patience and steady education. It takes a long time to educate us and they are very patient. Um, our FSI team as well have always been able to count on the BCANS team, not only to stand up and rally for disability and Indigenous rights, but they've supported us to do the same by helping us to understand and bringing us alongside. And this is where we need to be. This is where we want to be. In constant learning and moving towards a better world. And BCANs are the leaders of bringing us to that better world. And I'm so grateful for us to be able to be alongside BCANs on that. So I want to also um, thank the entire BCANs organization for the work that they, they do. And I'm gonna invite Rachel Skidmore to say a little bit more about BCANs and the work that they do. Hello everyone. Um, I was given the honor of doing a little speech tonight for BCANS because the individual who nominated BCANS was unable to make it here this evening, but they have provided information that they would have said had they been able to be here. And also I had other RPs in Victoria throw down information and really, really want to share their input as well. So I've tried to do everybody's praise justice here for them. 
So BCANS has such a wide variety of programs and supports that it's difficult to speak to any one of them as they're working both within the federal and the provincial jurisdictions. They work with individuals of all ages, all disabilities, and they assist clients from with everything from being able to receive mobility supports to truth, truth and reconciliation statements to finding home care. And also I found out this week they can help find rental units throughout the province. It's not a guarantee, but they do their best. And then after they find them, they, they can also help provide um, set up supports and find supports that will help individuals live independently. They work with individuals to liaison and navigate through any and all systems and jurisdictions that may be required. They help individuals complete paperwork, connect them to the right resources, and they walk alongside of the individuals they serve for as long as needed. BCANS is a safe place for Indigenous people with disabilities. They've done amazing work in promoting inclusion for Indigenous people with disabilities and have advocated for funding and rights provincially, federally, right up to the United Nations level. Bringing it back to a more local lens, BCANS is on numerous committees and at numerous tables to help bring the lens and voice of Indigenous peoples with disabilities, such as the Reimagining Community Inclusion, they were on the CLBC Indigenous Working Group, the Vancouver Island RDSP Working Group, and they help also to promote the RDSP and help people set them up, which we all know isn't as easy as it's supposed to be sometimes. Neil has been an incredible resource and has pulled together a fabulous team to provide sports throughout our province. They teach their employees and the greater public about Indigenous history and the history of colonialism and how there is systemic racism embedded in the law in the land we now call Canada. We are all honoured that BCANS was nominated and won tonight's award. And we are also so very grateful that they have been uh, recognised for the amazing work that they do. So thank you very much. Neil, if you have anything you want to say, you're more than welcome to. I do, and, and, and thank you, Angela. And thank you, Rachel, for those words. And certainly they're about our team here and, and it's all true that we have a, a very great team here, but I'd like to just thank uh, Dominic and the board as well and, and Angela and the, the uh, FSI team and all the volunteers, everyone here, uh, Diana and Lauren, great job uh, for winning those awards, well-deserved. Um, and I'd like to introduce my son, Luke, who's with me tonight. Um, I, I brought him along for the celebration of families. I, I, as you all know, all the work that you do, often we're separated from our families for, for too long and too often. And, and, and certainly in, in our case too, and in our organization we are as well. And, and, uh, and I thought I'd bring Luke in here uh, tonight uh, to show them a little bit of what uh, we do here and what our partners here, our family here, uh, about what we do to to assist each other and to assist people across British Columbia. He can't beat me at ping pong. I just want to have that noted as well so that uh, if you can write that down and, and I'll give you his email later, you can send it to him. Talk now because he's too shy, but he's a good kid and I'm glad he's here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just extremely pleased to, to be able to accept this award on behalf of our team here, our board of directors and, and our staff. And, and again, it's uh, the work I do here is, is minimal to the work that the, our team does and, and, and our collaboration with, uh, with uh, the Family Support Institute. And I can remember actually telling the stories of the first time I met Angela. Uh, Angela, we met outside in some cafe. Do you remember that? And I can't remember where it was. Um, and we, that was it was in the inner harbor of Victoria over beside the parliament buildings. That's right. That's where yeah. I, was. I was thinking of Vancouver. And, and, and yeah, we had we started a, a plan to save to uh, start uh, solving all the problems in the world. And we've solved some, but uh, we've got a little bit more work to do there. But um, yeah, we've had a long relationship with uh, with uh, the Family Support Institute in, in a number of ways and the team across B.C., uh, and, 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 and really both organizations complementing each other and, and the work that we do. So, so this, this award here, it, which is, you know, fantastic uh, that we received today is, is, is particularly um, uh, close to my heart because I'm a member of the Frog Clan, the Laxail Clan in the Gitsan Nation. And when I looked at it, I went, 
well, what the heck? So, uh, so it's really quite, uh, quite in tune uh, uh, for, for me here at the organization. I'm going to steal it now and say it was for me and not the organization, but no, it's all very good. So thank you once again. And, and again, congratulations to all the winners. And, and thank you everyone here and, uh, and have a good night. It's been great so far. Thank you, Neil. I remember that conversation in the Inner Harbor well. And, uh, you know, Neil, ha Neil is always so generous with his time to sit down and guide me and provide information. And you know, I'll often email him about, you know, school information and he'll send me the documentation, you know, about this, even though education isn't even necessarily inside BCAN's um, kind of portfolio or wheelhouse. But um, he sure makes budget lock up a lot more fun than it's supposed to be. So an, an amazing sense of humor as well. So thank you so much and congratulations. And so the next person, we're going to move on to our next award. The next person that we want to offer an honor in this celebration is in the category of community member. And so this award goes to Jane Green. And so there's so much I want to, do, I want to be able to say about Jane Green. I could sit and talk for hours. Um, I won't because I know I'm a talker, but what I will say is that Jane is recently a retire, retired as the coordinator of the classroom and community supports, um, support worker program from Selkirk um, College. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Jane, I just want to give a little plug here. In, in a book that FSI um, wrote several years ago, um, Jane is mentioned in, um, and it's called The Power of Knowing One Another, our book, it's on our, our, um, our website. And Jane is mentioned um, in the story called Jeffrey's Story. And um, Jeffrey is a, it was, um, when Jane was uh, working there, um, a, a co-teacher um, alongside Jane in the Classroom and Community Support Works program. And um, Jeffrey would tell, um, the, the story of Jeffrey is that he, he would teach in the Classroom and Community Supports program with Jane, and he is a person with lived experience of disability. And it was Jane who brought him into this role. And that story is a very profound one that really highlights how Jane um, lives her life. She lives with action. And so she is known for her passion and compassion for sharing experiential learning and with her students, with her friends, with the community at large. And what I mean by that is she's known for walking the walk not just talking the talk. And Jane celebrates diversity. Um, she supports people with love and attention. She brings that with her with an authenticity that will remain with you if you have the, the blessed love of being able to come in contact with her. Her commitment to inclusion and belonging has changed so many lives. And those of us who have been um, graced with knowing her will be changed and with her wisdom for the rest of our lives. And so I really encourage you, if you have the opportunity to get to know Jane, take it and, and soak it up. She's one of the most positive people I've known. Um, and so what I'd like to do now is um, welcome Ben Postmus to come and say a few words about Jane as well. And like I said, I could go on and on with just gushing over Jane. I won't, but um, I'm just so grateful to be able to, to have this award handed over to Jane. So I'm now going to offer it over to Ben. Thanks, thanks, Angela. I'm just going to set the tone here a bit, change the background to the hot tub, which is so... Sure. Um, to the training weekends. So Jane, uh, I am so glad that, um, that uh, I was able to nominate Jane for this award and uh, sad that she did not come to a training weekend in person, but this is the next best thing. And um, so uh, I've known two Janes uh, in my FSI life. Uh, the first one I met many, many years ago um, in Norma Collier's house in Castlegar. <clears throat> and uh, for my family, our lives changed after that. And so the Jane that we're here to celebrate with um, tonight is, uh, I've known her for a long time. My family, my wife particularly, and her family have known her even longer. 
Um, her father was the country doctor in Fruitvale um, many, 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 many moons ago. And uh, so um, he looked after many people, families, children. And so it's in her fiber. It's in her, it's in her DNA to look after people and to care about people. And I am so glad that there's a mom here tonight. Um, I was hoping she was going to come. And Kathy uh, LaFortune is here. And that's her story in the book that Angela talks about, um, the power of knowing each other. And I've got some words here. And if you've ever read... Jeff's story. Jeff, that's Jeff's story. That's Jeff's story, yes. Um, I, have, I, have, I have your words here. I just want to share them. So for, for every one of us, regardless of disability or label, the most powerful safeguard for our health and happiness is the presence of people who care what happens to us. People see who, who see us regularly pay attention when they do and respond to what they see. We call them friends, people who are not able to verbalize, who can't use words to tell us how they are feeling, what's going on in their lives, and what they need and want, need caring friends even more. So Jane was a recipient of the Community Living BC's WOW Award in 2010, and WOW stands for Widening Our World. <clears throat> and Jane has been a friend, not just of FSI families, but to many. She has always celebrated difference and acceptance and the richness, richness that comes of a wide variety of people bringing, them, bringing themselves through the door. The only thing that has changed in, in, about Jane is she's retired now. Um, she's still carrying that torch. And whenever I use the name Jane, I only think of two Janes, two, no others. And so it's my honor and pleasure to introduce everybody to Jane Green. Um, and so she has been so um, supportive of families in, in the area. I have seen it firsthand. Um, uh, she embraced a woman who, uh, with, after having four kids, decided to do a career change in about 1996 and went back to school and took the CCSW course and uh, works in human services field today, to this day. And that's my wife, Debbie. And some of you know her. And uh, yeah, so we have a long, a long relationship. And she has successfully passed the torch of her EA CCSW to another person that's here tonight, Elisa Gates. And um, I've had the pleasure of, both, of knowing both of them. And so I'm going to stop talking. And Jane, you are so deserving of this award. You know, Ben, when I uh, received the email from Angela and Sylvia, I was kind of startled. I, I really wasn't expecting anything like this to happen. And I thought, what are they doing? I mean, community member, that's me, but that's everybody, really, pretty much everybody that I know. And when this arrived today, and it's just beautiful, and you can't quite see it because of the background being on, but it has, so I'm going to take that off because I used to be able to do that. Um, I could take us to Hawaii instead there. And what, what happened that was so amazing to me was I started to look at this and I was talking with my husband, who is another community member, Andrew Breen, who's also here tonight who is how I got into um, the community in the, in the West Kootenai boundary in the first place. I, uh, I realized that the hummingbird, when I looked it up, beyond all those kind words about me, um, I realized that it applies to so many of our community members and to all the people that have, come through the CCSW or the EACSW program or any of the programs administered, I just want to do a shout out to Human Services Articulation, Lori Woods, you know, like Jay Goddard, all of these people who in their programs around the, around the province do the same work 
that Lisa and now Ruth and I have done for a kajillion years. Um, just to make it possible for people to have the great richness added to their life that's been added to mine and to, to my husband's as well. To be able to be a hummingbird and um, connect with families. Ben Posnikoff, you are on this call and I'm blown away. You're another co-teacher and you were in my classes and you taught so many people so many things. Kathy and Jeff, you are truly um, influencers. The other thing that's on this, since I took the background off, I'll take you to Hawaii in a minute, um, is the fireweed. And I just wanted to acknowledge um, the fireweed comes, I, I think it's fireweed. I don't know. My husband handed me a book at supper time because this arrived today. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And we decided it was firewood, fireweed. And I looked it up and it's about resilience. And it's about growing in the face of, uh, in, in lots of cases, a fire. And for so many folks, um, life is about resilience, I think, for all of us. So when I was walking on the beach thinking, okay, what is it that comes into my mind to say about this? And um, I think the, there were two words, and one was unconditional, that the work that we do and the family definition is truly about unconditional caring. And I know I learned that from my folks and I've learned it with my students and with everybody that I've had the great privilege of working with and it's about love. And so I really want to move into my rewirement. It's not retirement, it's retirement from teaching at the college because it's in really good hands now and I did it for a really long time. But right now it's rewirement. And I want to accept this award, um, thanking you all so very much for your graciousness and Ben for nominating. And I wanna invite you all to come with me on an all expenses paid trip. Um, I wanna accept this on behalf of all families and all community members. So let's go to Hawaii and just have a really nice time for at least a second or two while we can. I thank you for the award. I thank you for the honor. And every time I put crackers and cheese on this platter, I will think of all of the people with whom our lives have been so, so blessed. Thank you so much. Oh. Oh, thank you so much, Jane. Beautiful words. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so last, but certainly not least, um, I would like to present our final award and it goes to a business. Um, and so this year award, this year's award goes to a small home-based business called Pa Utopia. And it actually goes directly to the owner, Rebecca or Becky Stewart. She is unfortunately not here with us tonight, but I'm still going to say what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, Becky was connected to a job seeker, somebody seeking employment, who was interested in dog grooming. And she was connected um, through a project called Mentorability. And this project um, might typically connect people a couple of times. Um, but in Becky's case, she stayed mentoring this individual over the course of six or seven, it might even have been eight months. And as a matter of fact, I think she's still connected with him now. And she supports and guides him. Um, she has supported and guided him to become an employee. She's supporting and guiding him to become an employed dog groomer. 
and to take the courses that he needs to master his skills. She's assisted him to understand what tools he needs, what intricate skills he might need to master his, his craft going forward. She's been patient. She's been understanding. She's been thorough with him. And she's helped him to kind of understand all of the different things that he needs to be able to carve a path forward towards this career that he wants to develop for himself. She has gone above and beyond anything that a volunteer mentor would typically do and has all of the traits that I think I can safely say all of us yearn for, um, for a business, for a friend, for a community member, in the future employers, for any one of our family members. And so I just want to throw out a massive thank you to Becky for really setting the foundation of what inclusive communities really should look like in the future. Um, and so right now, even though Becky's not here, I want to invite Jillian Bradley forward to speak a few more words about Becky or Rebecca. Thanks, Angela. Um, I actually have a picture I would like, oh, I would like to share if I can. Sure, um, someone can give you screen sharing, sure. <laughs> Maybe I can't. That's okay. <laughs> Is that it? Who's got the ability to it's, give? It's okay. We can do that. Is it Bobby or Jessica? Not Jessica. Is it? Yeah, I'm just working on it. Okay. To... Bobby's doing it. Yeah. It's okay. There we go. There we go. That should work Love for you now. This. Can you see a picture of, oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> this is um, Becky from Paul Utopia and she is with um, Zach, who was the protege that um, Angela was speaking about. Um, and I wanted to share with you uh, words from the uh, community organization that supports Zach in his employment um, and as well a few words from Zach that he shared about Becky. So Zach is supported through Milieu Family Services in Surrey. And for the past six months, they've been working closely with Becky at Paw Utopia in Alder Grove. Um, Zach and, and his staff went to Alder Grove and dropped off a small gift for Becky uh, to thank her and update her on all the exciting things um, that are going on for Zach in the world of dog grooming. Um, Becky was so proud of him. Um, she asked that he continues to stay in touch and offers continued support with any questions he has. Zach took much of what Becky had to offer to heart, her idea of online dog grooming, technician course to start, then the purchase of his tools. And he has been in a paid practicum now for several months and loving it, which has actually turned into um, full-time employment for Zach. Um, Becky asked Zach, if this is something that he still wanted to do after getting into it now, and he was loud and clear with the resounding yes. Um, it's been really successful for Zach. His confidence has soared, and he is right where he wants to be. Um, so Zach wanted to share that um, this opportunity uh, opened the door for, for some interesting opportunities. Um, I actually ended up getting a job at a salon as a groomer technician. I don't think I would have had the opportunity I did if I hadn't come across MentorAbility who helped me connect with my mentor, Becky. So this was just such a lovely um, wraparound story of from start to finish of, uh, you know, what, what a community member and an employer um, can do for somebody and make such a difference in their lives. And, and through this mentorship of, of Zach not being quite sure if, if dog grooming was for him um, and meeting Becky and realizing, yes, this is what I'm really passionate about. And just her encouragement 
um, and, and her ongoing support uh, led him to full-time employment, which is the ultimate goal for, for these types of projects and, and for everybody. Thank you so much for sharing this. I'm so pleased. I love the photo. I love the testimonials and just hearing these types of stories give us all so much hope. And so thank you so much, Jillian. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if we have the screen sharing, we're going to move on to quickly our, um, quickly. Angela, can, can, can I just jump in for a minute? Yeah, actually, I was wondering, that's what I was kind of hesitating for. Yep, yep, I'm here. Thank I'm you. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> and I'm really excited that okay. the silent auction has closed. And I'm sorry if you received 7,000 emails telling that you won the prize. <laughs> it's just, it's a new program and we'll work with it a little bit better next time so we don't get so many uh, notifications. Um, so if you have won your, what you bid, you didn't really win, what you bid it on, if you, if you're, if you got, get to purchase it, just check it out. And um, if possible, please come and pick it up at our office if it's a, a physical item. If you're not in the area, contact me, and uh, we'll we'll work on getting we'll work on getting it to you. And um, if it's a certificate, I'll be emailing them tomorrow. Just a little caveat: I am flying to Ottawa tomorrow, so I'll be in and I'll be out out of action for five hours. So please be patient with me. I will do my best to get it to you. But now I would like to announce our 50-50 winner of $2,375 goes to Renee Morbin. Everybody unmute. Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Congratulations, Renee. Way to go. Yay. Thank you, Renee. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I'm on holidays too, so I'm like super stoked. <laughs> Congratulations, Renee. Awesome. awesome. I would like to thank everyone for participating in our fundraiser for um, purchasing 50-50 tickets for uh, donating items to the to the silent auction to um, to bidding on the items. Uh, I think this has been a really successful year for us and we appreciate your participation participation. Back to you Angela. Whew. Thank you, everybody. What an exciting time. I haven't even gotten to, I, I was talking all this time. I think people outbid me on everything. <laughs> Next time I have to, I have to delegate more. I've been told I have to learn how to delegate more. I need to delegate the speaking or we have to close things later in any case. All right. Um, okay, now we are going to move on to um, doing our volunteer certificate awards. And I think there's some screen sharing that's going to happen here, right? Okay. Because I don't have anything to read on my end. So I'm going to have to read it off the screen. So these are um, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to read the names out of our certificate um, winners, um, not winners, sorry, I'm, I'm in winning mode right now, our certificates um, for each batch. And then if anyone wants to say anything about um, in each batch, then they're more than welcome to. And then we'll move on to the next. So we have our 10 year certificates, our 20 years, then I think it's 25. And I'm not sure if we have anyone at the 30. I can't remember. I'm, this is going to be a surprise to me too. So we'll just wait for the screen to come up. And what an exciting time having all of our award people. Next time we'll have to, um, we'll be in person and we'll be able to sit around and have lots of hugs and not have to worry about. There's a weird thing down the middle of the screen here, Jess. Oh, 
Not okay. any, sorry, technical difficulties. That's all right. We've gotten used to like making our way. Um, okay. I'm not sure what that, okay. Sorry about this. Should have had more drum rolls. <laughs> Jessica, it's just the boxes from Zoom. So if you close the communication boxes, then that's what cover that's what makes a gray box. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just read through them anyways. Are we at the beginning of them? Now we are. Okay, so we'll just hopefully that the little boxes won't get in the way. So these are um, in recognition of our volunteers who have been volunteering with us for 10 years. So we're gonna start there with Linda Perry, Christine Hung, Kelly Sheldon, Angela Robertson, Cindy Sanford, Yuko McCullough, Roberta Johnson, Hope Taylor, that's all the 10 years. So I'm not sure, I, I, I'm not, I'm, it's not that I haven't memorized everybody who's on the Zoom tonight, but I'm not sure if any of our uh, folks are here tonight, but if they are, they're welcome to unmute and say a few words. Have a quick look over and see. I don't think they were. So then we will move on to our 20 year certificates. Jessica, if you move out of full screen mode, then you can make the box smaller so that the zoom control doesn't cover the certificate. Sorry, you would think after three years of zoom, I'd be better at this by now. I think you're wonderful at it. You're doing awesome. It's a lot. Beautiful. So 20 years, we have Jewel Bryant. And Linda Mochman. And I don't think either of them are here with us either. So then the next certificates are for 25 years. And we're gonna start with Catherine Shantora and Karen Speyer. Karen Graham, Marianne Castle, Anna Beaudry. And so I know a couple of those folks are here. If they want to unmute and say anything, they're more than welcome to. Hey, Angela, it's Hi. Anna Beaudry here. Hi. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for um, recognizing this. It feels a little bit weird because I haven't been so active in the last few years. So I don't know a lot of the new faces, um, but I am happy to see some of the uh, longtime people that um, really supported me way back when, when I started like Bonnie and Jane Holland and Dave and Lori, Don Robertson, Maisie. It's just so great to see everybody. And I just want to give you an update. So the, my five-year-old son that brought me to FSI 25 years ago um, is now, uh, well, I, 
oh, it's a terrible reflection, but he's now 30. Oh. He's um, uh, living on his own in his own apartment. He's been living there for four years now. And none of that would have been possible without this beautiful family of, of volunteers. So thank you so much for really supporting my family and filling my tank so that I can support others. Thank you so much, Anna. And what a wonderful photo and a story and to be able to have everybody here where he's come. You know, I mean, what a, what a great thing because that's, that's exactly, and you know, the thing with FSI is some families need a, very, a lot in the beginning or maybe they need a lot in the middle and sometimes they don't need a lot and we just know that you're there in the background and when we call on you, we know you're there and if, and if you need something, you know we're here and, and that's kind of, we're all in it together, right? Um, that's the reciprocity of this family. So thank you so much. Is there thank anyone? You. Is there anyone else who wants to share? I'll just say a few things, Angela. Um, and I um, ditto Anna's comments about seeing some wonderful faces that were here many, many years ago when I first joined um, Family Support Institute. Uh, Don Robertson and I go way back. Our boys. You know, are, are the same age and, um, you know, still get to see her now and then. So that's amazing. But the support that has been given to my family, you know, my son was three when I first started as a resource parent with FSI, and he's now 28 years old and living life and loving it, living in a home share and, and doing very, very well. And I know that when I tell the story, I mean, I, I'm now, um, I now work for FSI, but when I tell the story of how I was first introduced and that lived experience was such a lifeline that many of those that came before me shared with me that, that, that give you that support to carry on and move on. And, and when I'm able to tell my story now to others, um, I'm now that older person that's telling their <laughs> lived experience and, and what goes around and comes around. So it, it's just really a pleasure and an honor to be a part of this amazing organization. Thank you so much, Karen. I think we're ready to move on. Did we have another batch of, okay. So for 30 years, we are recognizing Susan Cairns, Annie Russo, And I know neither one of them are here, but I know those are names that so many of us know and have heard and, and called on. And so a huge congratulations to them also. Do we have, a th we have another batch, okay. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is great. And for 35 years, we have Marie Webb. Ethel Magnus, Judy Ennis, Judy Peterson, and um, uh, I, I will say Marie Webb sent me a message um, just the other day saying that she was unable to come. She really wanted to, but um, that she is just as connected to FSI as, as ever. I, I speak to her on the phone every once in a while, and she's still doing all of her connecting and community engagement work. Um, and, uh, and so she wanted to send her, her thanks to everybody and her love to everybody here. Um, and so if, uh, if anybody, I guess this is where the storytelling begins. And so I had planted that seed earlier. If you have a story you want to share, a funny one or a particular moment in time um, that stands out for you, um, please go ahead. Don, I was hoping you would have a story to tell. You've got a, you've got a good story bank in your mind. I uh, was looking, I quite often get pictures come up on my screen that um, uh, that remind me of the past and I was going to send it to you guys actually. It was um, a picture of Kathy Anthony and uh, we were still up in Naramata 
and um, she was lighting the nice green, um, what were they, they, they lit up the, and flew up in the air. The lanterns. The yeah. lanterns. <laughs> and I just remember her running up the street, zigzagging all the way up there, trying to get the lantern that was going to get caught in the tree. And the fact that everybody ran up the street after her, it was just the funniest thing. That lantern story is got to be the best lanterns, the, the best FSI story that I've I've participated in anyways. I, I think we were so afraid we were gonna set the whole place on fire. I, oh, I think yeah. Kathy was, we were all laughing. Kathy yeah. was terrified. Oh yeah. yeah. She was she was beside herself and the rest of us weren't a big help because we were all laughing so yeah. hard, right? Well, and for those of you who weren't there, this is, uh, this is a time when we had asked Kathy to do a closing ceremony for FSI. And she had this beautiful song. She had these paper lanterns with the little gas fuel cell in the middle. And um, I think she was playing that Wind Beneath My Wings song in the, and all day long, the president of the board kept coming up to me saying, it's too windy. It's too windy outside. And I was like, it's not too windy. It's going to be just fine. And even Kathy, I think at one point said, do you think it's too windy? And I was like, I don't think it's too windy. It's going to be fine. And then we go outside and she starts playing the song and she starts lighting the lantern and the, the, the lantern just lifted off the ground and a gush of wind picked up this lantern and flew it up the hill. And Kathy started chasing the lantern and she had given this beautiful speech about, you know, the, the, there was a lantern for um, family members that we love and we care for. There's another lantern for those that we've lost and remembering those we've lost. And as this lantern is flying up the road with Kathy zigzagging, there's these parents going, oh, isn't that just the way? Just like our dreams, they crash and burn in a tree. And I mean, it's just the people. And there's Kathy yelling at Rick to send to climb the tree and get the lantern out. And there's the person from Naramata saying, don't you dare climb that tree. The branch caught on fire. And there's the president of the board coming out. And all he does is just walks by me going, told you it was too windy. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it was, it was unbelievable. And that thing hung in the tree for the rest of the training weekend. Meanwhile, the rest of the unlit lanterns went directly into the silent auction <laughs> where people started bidding on them. Yeah, that was, uh, that was quite a funny story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was, go ahead, Gord. Uh, speaking of the silent auction, I will always remember the day that Dave Painter bid against himself on one of the jerseys. <laughs> Up to his own bid. Didn't he do that a few times? Well, there was one time in particular I remember, but uh, yeah. Yeah, he was bidding against... Uh, Joe, 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 Joe Cave. Jersey that um, um, you can hold them up and say, and uh, uh, Steve Nash donated, and, and he was getting all excited trying to get Joe to pay more money. And <laughs> next thing you know, it cranked up his whole bid by 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it was so that it was so that he'd have to pay more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, look what we have. We still go. Oh, the lantern. <laughs> we're we're so afraid. We can't. You know, we'd have to be in the middle of the lake. I think to take to try them out because we're so afraid. We live in a tinderbox now. Yeah. <laughs> I think Bonnie Fallowfield still. She has a few too. I <laughs> oh gosh! Oh goodness! <laughs> yeah, light them up in the winter. That's right. Some snow on the ground. Yeah. yeah. More and more. We want more um, embarrassing and funny <laughs> stories. Embarrassing stories. <laughs> we oh, know dear. they're there. So unmute yourselves. Come on. 10 year recipient, 20 year recipient, 30. I, I, I remember a pole dancing night uh, many oh. years ago. I see. 
Maria, <laughs> Ty, <laughs> there was a whole group of them there. The dad's got a pole lamp. Make it on a that. pole lamp. Where was the pole? Is that in Naramata? Uh, well, it was a it was a pole lamp in one of the cabins. And, and, one of the yeah. <laughs> in one of the, in the house. They were in a cottage, behind. weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were. It was in the cottage, right directly behind where where dinner was served. Yeah. Uh, after hours fun. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and then there was the also the time in Naramata where somebody had had a bit too much indulgence and decided to go looking for somebody to party with them. And it turned out it was the Ministry of Child and Family Development. Yeah. <laughs> she walked in on her, didn't she? Or something? <laughs> she knocked on their door saying, I'm here to party with a martini in her hand. And it turned out it was, wasn't it Randy Malsness? Was it oh, Randy? Oh, yes, <laughs> it was. That's funny. Randy said, don't worry. I didn't have my glasses on, so I can't identify her. <laughs> <laughs> and and MCFD funds our training weekend. But she was well, all good fun. There's fun in fund. There's fun in fund, right? right? That's so. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all about connecting. Yes, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't have, it's not an embarrassing story, but I do want to share about how I came, became connected with the Family Support Institute. Yeah, please. Um, I lived in Victoria and was at um, the Moss Street Market. I don't know if any of you were familiar with that, but, you know, like a farmer's market on the weekend. And um, this young man, so my son was uh, um, four and he was just getting um, fitted for his first power wheelchair. And this young man, young boy, drives by me and in a, the exact same power chair that my son was looking at. So I raced over and I sat in front of him and I said, hey, I'm Anna, can I talk to you? I, I really wanna know how you like your, your wheelchair. And I had all these questions. And, um, and so we were like chit chatting and whatever. And then I could feel this presence standing behind me <laughs> and it was Alex Holmes, Forrester Yates, <laughs> however, <laughs> any of you know, which last name you know her by. <laughs> and I turned around and she said, well, I was wondering who was talking to my son. And I said, well, what, well, like, why wouldn't I? talk to him my, my son is getting this same power chair and I really wanted to like hear all about it and she goes oh honey I got to introduce you to my FSI family <laughs> no sorry it was Darlin Darlin I got to introduce you to my FSI family and it was from that moment on we were best friends and um yeah she she was my uh mentor and she was Kieran was a little bit older than my son, so he kind of like um, led. They led the way for us. It was awesome. But I just always remember that there was just this huge presence behind me. <laughs> I better see who that is. Yeah. That's definitely Alex, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Jane, Jane convinced a couple of us, Barb and I, to to go to the training weekend. It was the last, last time it was at Camp Alexandra. And um, she said, come on away, we're gonna pamper you guys. And we thought, <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you actually been to Camp Alexandra? <laughs> Wasn't, oh. We weren't expecting quite that much. We were thought more pampering, less primitive. <laughs> <laughs> less camping. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was pretty rustic but you really got to know one another there oh you did you yeah. certainly did <laughs> but yeah. it was seven people would share a cabin in one bathroom oh yeah 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 you know we 20 thought... people lined up in the morning for a shower right like you better get up at 5 30 you better hope everybody drank a lot the night before otherwise you weren't getting your shower yeah so it was <laughs> i it was i think fun. i was in a cow a, a little bedroom that was um there was six um, bunk beds and I was on the top the top bunk 
of like, and it was three bunks. It wasn't just two bunks. Yeah. <laughs> it was hot up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we yeah. went to Nevada, it was the lap of luxury. It was. It really was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody had their own shower. It was like crazy. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. And we had the hot tub. Yes. Right. Well, some of us had it more than others, right, Ben? <laughs> I was going to say, is Ben still here? I don't yeah. think so. First Ben's hot tub stories. He always has some. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't God, think that's... those are repeatable. <laughs> don't you remember the year that they actually did the Kootenays did their skit and they did the hot tub? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they all came out. They had made this cardboard hot tub and they all yeah. came out with with swimming caps on singing yeah. a song. Oh, it was priceless. Right. Some of, the, some of those skits were just so amazing. Like, yes, was really funny. well done. Mm -hmm. I'm envisioning now with the way technology is that that would have gone viral. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Definitely. We live in a new world yeah. now with all of this technology. I can only imagine the documentation we could get. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure all of us would have kept that sort of between ourselves in the right. page um, <laughs> because none of us really wanted out there out there. Just what happened in Naramata stayed in Naramata. It really did because cell phones weren't a thing, you know, in the early days. So that's true. Yeah. That's true. You're going to have to have it like at weddings where cell phones have to stay in a blocked <laughs> box at the entrance <laughs> and you can receive it as you're leaving the venue. <laughs> <laughs> that hot tub took me out on my very first training weekend, actually. My introduction to the training weekend, got in a hot tub, spent way too long in there, had an allergic reaction to the chlorine. Yeah. Bev Kissinger gave me a couple of Benadryls and I was out, I slept like for two days. <laughs> oh. You missed all the excitement then, Adam. I missed it all, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, we have had some good conversations in that hot tub though. You know really what? I never, went, I never got. I, I never, never went in it. I never went in it. Jane, I you guess were that, always working. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, working yeah. up and yeah, yeah. It's probably just just as well. Just as well. I was just thinking. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm I'm not a big fan of hot tubs, anyways. But the stories I've heard about that hot tub. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, uh, oh, I don't know. I think we were solving the education system, but oh, nobody would listen true. to us. <laughs> the conversations were probably pretty great. I think Bonnie and if I had remember them. conversations in there. I, I have a clear re re uh, recollection of a conversation I had with Angela. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> so I was uh, president of the board. We're sitting just inside the entrance at uh, Naramata. It was kind of a break time or, or something was going on, but we were in there. The gym? Like Angela the gym? was just back from her second maternity leave. And I was in my third year on the board. So I had one more year to go. And I said, you know, I'm, I think I may just you know, do this this year and then I'll, I'll be done. And uh, Angela <laughs> said, well, no, no, we, we need, we need to, your continuity. And I said, well, you know, it was, to be honest, Angela, it's been challenging, you know, because this was her second mat leave. And she said, uh, you know, I promise I'm not having any more kids. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll stay on the board. Actually, I think it might have been just before the AGM. So I, it's probably my fourth. Yeah, it was my fourth year. I was just mm. at, finishing my fourth year. And I said, uh, oh, okay, okay, I'll stay on. And then, uh, like, <laughs> it seemed like days later, I was announced, yeah, I'm pregnant again. <laughs> and then we had to go through the, uh, I was also, no, that, I think I stepped been, too close to the hot tub. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, oh, look, no, I look mean, what kind of a swimmer, you know, Hannah is. Her diving, you know, you, who knows? That's right. <laughs> that's right. We have three beautiful daughters, but I, I'll never forget that conversation. I'm, I'm not having any more kids. I have no recollection of that conversation. I know you don't. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> I, I remember, actually, there were... Bonnie's mom used to always bring a lot of or, or send along a lot of knitting and stuff and she had all these baby blankets and stuff in this box and and 
I remember your Bonnie saying, you know, I don't know if I even want to put these out. And, and you said, oh yeah, put them out, put them out. And I remember Barb turning to you, Angela, and saying, why are you going to need those, Angela? No, no, no. But we need to get all the money we can for FSI. <laughs> and then Angela's buying all the baby blankets. And we're like, I think there's something there. Something's going on here. Yeah. yeah. I like blankets for well, myself, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> And training we well, I don't know if in your never... house, Angela, I have a lot of dogs and a lot of our dogs sleep on baby blankets because they're easier to wash. They're smaller. You can switch them out. So it's, it's the dogs, not the baby. Yeah. Fortunately, sure. back then I didn't have a dog. So I, couldn't <laughs> that as an I was trying. I was reading I know, there I for you. <laughs> this was 18 years ago before when she was uh, just got pregnant with Jada. So uh, no, there was... I think you're living in an apartment. You probably didn't have a dog at all at the time. No, so. they no. had fish. I had Lots fish. fish. That's right, Don. <laughs> yeah. Well, in training, we could never be complete without Dave and Lori dancing. Oh, That's I was. Great. Great. Oh, you guys should do a dance for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Oh, camera goes off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they were putting their shoes on. That must be what's going on. That's yeah. gotta be it. <laughs> Angela, I asked Diana if I could see her award because I haven't seen it yet. Can she share it with us? Yeah. 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 I don't have a story to share, but I can share my award. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome. beautiful. Great. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. There's a there, I will say that there's a couple of um awards that do need to be re like we want we want to reprint them and so even though they're beautiful they'll look exactly the same but um like diana yours isn't one of them but mm -hmm. there's a couple that don't say who the award is from so for example they don't say from the family so oh, my, <laughs> my water all over the place um the so they don't say that it's from the family support institute um so if you were to hang it for example or use it, it wouldn't say that it's, you know, from the Family Support Institute. So we're gonna look into getting those um, uh, potentially reprinted. Um, and then um, I, I, I think that might be the only one. So if it doesn't say the Family Support Institute on the outs on the front, then you can, so Jane, I think your, yeah, see yours says, I think it just says community member with your name. And it should say like family support institute, um, community member celebration, like this one. Yeah, if you can hold it up, Diana, where it says family support institute, volunteer, resource parent, and then it'll have your name so that if you were, so people know who you got the award from. <laughs> so yeah. And so a couple of them, I think, and I'm not sure, Neil, if yours says, um, the whole thing on the outside either. So it'll still be the same image. It will just be, and then you would have two. You could have the one. <laughs> so we're just, but when Sylvia gets back, we'll, um, from her holiday, we'll, um, we'll deal with it. You mean we're getting another award? Excellent. Well, does yours on the outside um, have the name Family Support Institute on it? It doesn't, no. It says, no, it says yeah. not nonprofit organization. Right. Yeah. So we're going to get those. So you can just keep that one, but you'll get another one that will say the name, the, the correct printing on it. Can I ask yeah. a question about the, the platter? They're beautiful. Yeah. They're just beautiful. So and they're, yeah, go ahead. Tell us the story. Of, yeah. Of, so, yeah. So it's, um, it's an organization called Community Living Society. They have a uh, um, a social enterprise that is self-advocates that do pottery. So it's called Pottery Works. Um, and the artist who made all these platters, um, her name is Riley. She's First Nations. She is a self-advocate. And this is, she made all of the platters and does all of the artwork herself. Um, and so she works at Pottery Works. And one of the things about Pottery Works is they pay well above living wage. So it's, um, it's an, a very, they, they get, the artists get very well paid. They have their own business. 
um, and they they get to sell their pottery not only to people like us who buy it and and you know have little biz you know business transactions, but it's also a gallery, so you can go into Pottery Works Gallery and you can select some of the artists artwork out of the gallery or you can um, commission them to do work as well if you like their artwork you can commission the different artists to do work so we do a lot of work with pottery works because the artists there are just fantastic yeah they're all and everybody who works there is a self-advocate which is an inclusive employer and as well are they in seattle no they're located in new westminster okay oh yeah I had the same question because the box says Seattle. I'm like, oh, oh did it? We, yeah. you know, it probably was. Is it was the boxes we used out of our office to ship the ship. Oh, okay. Food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're not in Seattle. They're just down the road from our office in New West. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're um, and you can you can go online as well. Pottery Works has a store online, and you can see all of the self advocates. Um, work there as well and and see and so, so much of it is just it's just gorgeous work yeah and so Riley is our go-to because we just love um her First Nations art is just so beautiful yeah we really like it they're on Facebook are they they have a Facebook page too thank you Jane they I didn't know that yeah, yeah. great well, I see people are starting to leave. So I guess our evening is winding down and we're right at eight o'clock. And I'm just, I want to just thank everybody so much for coming to our celebration of families evening and just having, like I said, at the very beginning, an evening of togetherness and coming together in relationship and celebration. I know for me, I've, I haven't even thought once about anything that has been plaguing my mind. It's just been such an evening of light, joy, um, fun, and just like we said, celebration. And I wanna also just again, honor all of our award winners tonight and all of our storytellers and all of our volunteers for everything. Thank you so much. It's just been such a great night. Well, and thank you, Angela, and your staff who've worked so hard, you know, putting not just tonight together and Sylvia for all her hard work around organizing and, um, you know, the workshops that we've all been able to participate in. And I know it's, um, uh, I've enjoyed a lot of them and learned so much from them. So uh, my hands are up to you and your staff and everybody who's worked so hard on putting this together. And next year, we're going to Naramata, baby. No, no, not no. Naramata. Manning we're Park. Manning <laughs> Park. Yes. We hey. can go to Naramata after Manning Park. There you go. Road yeah. trip. Yeah. Yeah. Some wineries. That's right. <laughs> Winery yeah. tour. Yes. See how many more wineries are there now? Yeah. <laughs> There's a few. I was there last year. <laughs> we can stop by the Painter's Winery on our way by. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Thank Perfect. you for that, Jane. Yes, the, the team has worked hard and I, I definitely thank everybody as well. Thank you.